Hey everybody, what's up, how's it going? Robin here, welcome to today's video. And in today's video on this channel, what I'm gonna be doing is I'm gonna be reviewing to you guys my entire stock portfolio and give you guys my August monthly stock portfolio update. So inside this video today, guys, I'm gonna be doing a deep dive analysis of all my stocks and everything inside my stock portfolio. I'm gonna be showing you guys my earnings. I'm gonna be showing you guys the stocks that I own. I'm gonna show you guys um, how, how good those stocks are doing right now in terms of the market and whatnot. I'm gonna be showing you guys everything inside this video. Um, so this video is gonna be a bit of a long video, so you might want to grab yourself a cup of coffee, make yourself a sandwich, uh, put the video on your living room TV, uh, and get comfy on the couch because this video is gonna be pretty long and we're gonna be doing a deep dive here and the three portfolios that we're going to be talking about today is going to be my dividend uh, portfolio that we built 100% from scratch on this channel so just a quick little note for you guys who are brand new to the channel I do have a dividend investing case study series where every single week we publish one video and I show you guys how I built this dividend portfolio from scratch so check out the link in the playlist of the, uh, in the, in, check out the playlist in the link in the description of this video there'll be a link there you guys can check that out if you guys want to see how we built that portfolio but we'll be covering that portfolio today we'll be covering my REIT portfolio which is once again my part of my dividend portfolio but it's basically basically all just real estate stocks and then last but not least we're going to be covering my wealth simple um, robo advisor portfolio which is like my main portfolio that I have the bulk of my money in and the very first stock market portfolio that I ever made and if you guys are new to the channel and you guys want to check out my previous monthly update series I'll put a link in the description of this video as well to that series if you guys want to see how my stocks have been doing uh, throughout the entire year of 2020 and before we dive into the video guys, I just want to say really quickly, if you guys do enjoy this content, uh, be sure to give give the video a big thumbs up and subscribe to the channel if you guys want to see more videos. I appreciate every one of you guys who watched the video and all you guys who continue to support me over time. It's amazing that you guys let me do this. Um, so because of that, this is why I do these videos. So thank you very much and smash that like button. All right, so the first portfolio we're gonna gonna start out start off with is my Robo Advisor with Wolf Simple. So so let's jump over to Wolf Simple and let's see how my main stock portfolio is doing. All right, everybody, welcome to um, my first portfolio here, and this is the very first portfolio that I've ever built. Um, the first stock portfolio I ever built, and I'm using Wolf Simple, and Wolf Simple is basically just a Canadian uh, robo advisor. So you could replace this with any robo advisor like Quest Trade, or I'm not too sure any uh, what the American alternatives would be. But this is just a basic robo advisor that takes your money, uh, you put the money in, and they invest it for you. And this is the very first portfolio I built when I didn't really know too much about investing, and I still make it the you know the the bulk of my money goes into this portfolio because. Um, I want to kind of have something that I'm going to be guaranteed to grow over time. And there's nothing wrong with using robo-advisors. They they're, have a pretty good record. As long as you're investing into one that does really good, there's nothing wrong with using it. So inside this portfolio, you guys can see here that I have about $50,000 Canadian. Um, I've been building this portfolio pretty aggressively over the past couple years. And I started it in 2019, March of 20, 2019 or so. So it's been about a year and a little bit since we started this portfolio. And you guys can see here that the total returns are about $2,828 right now. And if we go over the course of the last month, the portfolio, you guys can see that we've grown quite a bit. Over the course of the last three months, once again, we're still on a steady increase since the market crash. And over the past six months, you guys can see the big market crash here happened in March. And our portfolio took a pretty big deep dive. And I think if I remember correctly, it was sitting about negative $8,000 or so. But since then, we just kept investing the money. We kept putting money in. And you can see ever since March, um, I guess it would be uh, mid-March or so when, when the stock market crash happened, the portfolio just has been increasing and we just keep, keep we've just been putting money in. And to show you guys how, let's see if we can get to the screen that tells me how much money that I actually put in, the screen right here. You can see that throughout the year, in March, we put about $2,000. In April, we didn't put as much as I wanted to. Um, that's because I put most of the money in my dividend portfolio. But April, we put $500. And then May, $1,400, about $1,500. June, $1,500. Oops. And then July, $350. And then August, $100. July went down because I'm focusing more on my dividend portfolio right now. But you guys can see here basically that throughout the entire crash and throughout the entire year when stocks were low, we just kept putting money in. And that's what allowed this portfolio to grow and get to where it is today because most ETFs and most portfolios are kind of just, if you looked at the year, we'd kind of be sitting at a, um, we'd basically be sitting at like breaking even, but because we kept putting money in when markets were low and we just kept investing on a every other day kind of thing, my portfolio is actually sitting at a positive right now, which is really cool. So let's jump into the portfolio itself and let's see what we have here. So I'm going to go into my holdings 
and show you guys the holdings that we have. And the cool thing about this screen is we can actually see um, the market value, we can see the shares, and we can see the performance. So I'm going to zoom in really quickly here. And this, for, uh, for anybody who's wondering, is I'm using the Wealthsimple Growth uh, Risk Level 10 portfolio. So this is 90% equity and 10% bonds. Um, so mostly just stocks inside this portfolio. And it's mostly based out of US stocks and international stocks. So you can see here the number one biggest um, ETF is VTI. And VTI is one of my biggest, uh, I love VTI. It's one of my favorite ETFs. I actually did a video a couple of days ago. I'll, I'll link to that video in the description if you guys wanna check it out. It's a review of VTI. And VTI is a solid, um, a solid just all around US based um, ETF. And it's a really good performance. And as you guys can see here, it's actually my best performing ETF inside my portfolio. So our VTI is sitting uh, about 11.3% about um, in regards to performance, and that's super cool. And like I said, that's mostly just for me regularly investing throughout the year. And because I put money in when the market was low, it allowed us to kind of get a little bit ahead of, ahead of everybody else, right? And that's, that's the power of investing on a regular basis, and that's the way I do it, and that's the best way to do it. So market value is $11,000. $435, 50 shares, and 11% gain right now. The next one we have is International Equities, and this is XEF. And this one's a little bit down, like mostly, most other markets are starting to kind of break even, if you will. Um, the US ones obviously have jumped up quite a bit ahead, but other ones are just starting to break even. And the other cool thing is like Canadian stocks are actually starting to rise up a bit, and we'll, we'll get to that in just a second. But XEF right now, we have about $10,000 inside our portfolio, 365 shares, negative 1%. Um, but that's okay because, you know, beginning of the year, this ETF and all the international ones were doing really bad. So the fact that they're kind of starting to recover, I'm okay with that. If we can get like a zero return or a plus two or 3% return by the end of the year, I'll be happy with that because this year overall has been a pretty negative year on paper. But if we can kind of keep investing inside these ETFs, we might actually finish the year at a pretty good positive rate. Um, but we'll just have to keep investing, right? So EMV is the, the next ETF inside the portfolio. Uh, once again, this is an international, this is like an, um, uh, an Asian-based ETF. So a lot of Japan, uh, China, China and on stuff like that, all those Asian markets. So this one is once again, is pretty low still, about $8,000 inside this uh, ETF and 113 shares as well. And keep in mind guys, I wanna mention that these are the ETFs that Wealthsimple has picked for me. I didn't pick these uh, myself inside this portfolio, but my other portfolios I actually picked them myself. So we'll, we'll cover, they'll be a little bit more interesting when we get them get to them inside this video. Um, the next one we have is Canadian Equities, which is XIC. This is one of the biggest popular, like just all around based ETFs in Canada. $5,830, um, $5,830, 220 shares. And Canadian markets are actually had, a, over the past couple days, actually have risen quite a bit. Uh, 2.7 percent so that's that's super cool um it's nice to see canadian markets doing really well so uh, I'm, I'm proud of that because i'm canadian myself but yeah canadian markets have done pretty good over the past little while and canada has done a pretty good job actually of kind of handling everything that's been going on so um, props to canada for that and hopefully we we see that trend going upwards next one we have is another global equities which is a little bit of everything it's predominantly u.s stocks but there is some u.s stocks some canadians some you know low foreign stocks as well it's just more diversification, I guess, they wanted to add inside the portfolio. So this is $5,000, $612, um, 45 shares, and negative 1%. And the last one we have is a U.S. Equities Canadian Hedge Fund. I'm not too sure why they picked this fund. I guess it's just something to kind of protect against the, the, the Canadian dollar and U.S. dollar fluctuating and stuff like that. But this is a, a very small amount with only $2,000, 46 shares, but it is up 11.5%. So... You know, can't complain with that. But this one is basically, VUS is basically basically the hedged version of VTI, I, I believe. So pretty much the same. And it makes sense because they're pretty much performing the same, right? So I think that's how that works. Next up we have the fixed income, which is 10% of this portfolio. So which is bonds, which isn't that much, but um, I guess they just wanted to add that little bit extra sta stability to the portfolio. And it's not that much in the end. So we have $3,000 in ZFL, which is a Bank of Montreal long federal bond ETF. Um, 117 share, 177 shares, which pretty good performance actually right now, about 13.6%. But as equities rise, it's probably going to go down a little bit over the next little while. But it doesn't really matter because it's not much of our portfolio. But they do provide us with a little bit of monthly uh, dividend income, as I'll show you guys in just a second here. The other one we have is Q-Tip, which is once again a very, very small amount. I guess it's a Canadian hedged U.S. bond, um, $1,253. 11 shares and 7.8% return. So good returns, but because they're not uh, much of our portfolio, 
uh, it doesn't really matter in the end. And at the bottom here, we have a little bit of cash that Wealth Simple still needs to invest over the next couple days. So that's the entire portfolio for this big portfolio. And once again, this is basically a set it and forget it type portfolio. Um, and that's that's basically how I do the bulk of my investing, or at least how I started um, doing my investing. And if we go to the activity tab here, we'll take a peek at my dividends and whatnot. Um, for the past month, there hasn't been too much because this isn't a big dividend-based portfolio. It's most, mostly a growth portfolio with a little bit of dividends here and there, but most of the dividends come out in June, as you guys can see here. We got some big dividend payments in June. Uh, but for August, we had a dividend payment from ZFL of $7.65. Just zoom in a little bit so you guys can see it a little bit better. And in July, we got our, our dividend from Q-Tip, which was a dollar. And then once again in July, we had a couple other dividends um, as well. So um, not too much in terms of dividends, but that's basically the entire Wealth Simple um, Robo Advisor portfolio currently sitting at two thousand eight hundred and thirty four dollars in gains And I'm just going to bring up a percentage here because this actual return percentage isn't correct We'll go simple percentage and we're sitting at a, a 3.8 percent gain almost four percent Which I'm pretty happy with guys and as the markets look like they're going up That's only going to increase even more. So I'm pretty happy overall with this portfolio and before really quickly, guys, we jump into the Wealth Simple Trade account and I show you guys my dividend based portfolio. I just want to mention really quickly for any of you guys who want to use Wealth Simple, um, I do have an affiliate program and I'll put my affiliate link in the description of the video. If you guys want to use that link, you can. And basically, the way it works is if you guys open up an account that's completely free to do and you deposit a minimum of $500 inside Wealth Simple, um, they'll give you a $50 bonus and they'll give me a $50 bonus. Um, so if you guys want to use that link, go ahead. Um, you guys don't have to use my link per se, but make sure you do use the link because you're you know if you're going to be using wealth simple you might as well get some free money um so as long as you put in 500 in a minimum deposit um you'll get 50 bucks so make sure you use somebody's link um at least and if you guys do use my link i appreciate it very much so that's my wealth simple uh, account portfolio and that's how we've done let's jump over to wealth simple trade and let's see how our dividend stocks are doing all right guys so here's my wealth simple trade account here's my dividend portfolio hope you guys can see everything unfortunately i can't zoom in because i am using an android emulator emulator to capture this on my computer um in the future i'll try maybe to set up a better way of doing this but for now this is just how i'm going to do it and this is a tax-free savings account the first portfolio we have is three thousand eight hundred and forty dollars canadian and right now i'm trying to work on building this portfolio up so we can get more dividend income rolling in and we can keep earning more more money if you guys want to see like my monthly totals and how i built this portfolio once again be sure to check out the dividend investing case study link will be in the description of this video so this portfolio right now i'm going to check over the past couple days over the past couple months and we'll see our returns so for the last day we are up at nine dollars and 67 cents um, which is 0.26% and keep in mind also the bulk of this portfolio is in Canadian and US stocks I just want to point that out as well um, over the course of and we'll, we'll dive into that in a second specifically over the course of one week our tax-free savings account dividend portfolio is up 2.16% which is $81 over the course of one month we are up 5.2329% almost 6% gain over the past month guys that's pretty cool um, so that's up $200 in total and over the past three months we are up 5% which is about $200 and over the course of all time we are actually up $50 so 1.34% so we started with this portfolio investing with this portfolio before the market crash happened and we were already up 1.34% so I'm pretty happy with that we've kind of basically recovered and it's only like smooth sailing from here because I do believe that throughout like nobody can predict what's actually going to happen and if the markets do dip again i don't care because that means i can buy stuff at a cheaper price and then in the future when the markets eventually do go up we'll just make more money so but i do think that for going towards the end of the year we're going to see the market kind of rise uh, it might not be like huge gains but we should see you know a little <clears throat> little bit of an increase going towards the end of the year so that's how the portfolio is doing overall let's dive into some of these stocks i'm going to go through all these stocks really quickly if I can guys, um, once again, I, I know this video is pretty long as I said it was, but we'll try to drive, drive through this as quick as possible. So the first stock we have here is Bank of Nova Scotia. And this is a stock I bought a couple shares of. Um, we have three shares inside our tax-free savings account and dividend portfolio, uh, a dollar value of $168. Uh, it's 4% of my portfolio and our total return is about 1%, which is $1.65. So, I've been slowly buying Canadian um, bank stocks inside this portfolio because I do believe um, when it comes to dividend investing, some of the best stocks to buy, uh, especially Canadian stocks, are bank stocks. Like bank stocks have a good history 
of doing well, they have amazing dividend growth, and they also have a good combination of stock appreciation and good dividend yield. So, and, and in terms of like some of the safest stocks to invest into, that's definitely um, you know the, the bank stocks. So. Um, we're we'll definitely working on adding more bank stocks inside this portfolio. The next one we have is another bank stock, Canadian Imperial Bank of Commerce or CIBC. Um, we have two shares right now, um, and this is 5% of our portfolio, and our total return is 0.43%. Um, once again, we're just slowly building these out, and they have really nice yields, and we're just taking that money, and we're taking our dividends, and we're just reinvesting them back into the portfolio. The next one we have is another popular Canadian stock. This is Enbridge. Um, Currently valued at $44 Canadian. We have three shares inside our portfolio, and this is 3.51% of, of the portfolio. We are currently up 7% right now, which is $8.75. So, so this one, so Ember just performed pretty good inside our portfolio, especially considering the fact that we bought it um, towards the start of the year. The next stock inside our portfolio is Fortis. This is an energy-based Canadian stock. Really, really stable, good, solid company. Um, we just started investing with Fortis, even though I think they're one of the, like probably one of the better energy companies. They're kind of like Enbridge, but they're more of a stable kind of, I think they have a lot of room for growth going in the future, and I think they're gonna be a really good um, energy and utilities company to invest into. We bought our first three shares uh, not too long ago, and our return right now is, we're, we're up about point four percent which is 66 0 0.66 cents um, so that's definitely one I'm going to be looking forward into the future and I'm definitely going to be buying more for the stock next one we have is Manulife this is a finance company based out of Canada uh, an insurance company that kind of thing and they're really really solid I think this is another company that's going to do really really well going into the future we currently have four shares of Manulife and we are up 5.88 percent so already up six percent from Manulife I kind of wish I would have bought more in the past especially since it's so cheap and it's easy to get shares but you know what it's okay I think it, I still think it's gonna go up in the future and it's got a very very nice dividend yield and I think there's a lot of growth for manual life and it's definitely gonna be one of those companies you want to look out for going into the future next one we have is PIF this is a stock that we bought a little while back um, I don't know if I'm gonna keep this inside my portfolio I might sell it eventually um, but it has performed quite well and it's hard to tell if like this is because you know, it could just be because we did buy it before, like during the crash. Um, but I might be selling it going into the future because I, I don't really know too much about Polaris. Uh, but we'll have to wait and see. I mean, it is up 5.65%, uh, which is pretty good. Um, so I might be selling, I might be trimming some of these stocks and focusing more on like instead of having a wide variety of portfolio with a bunch of different stocks, maybe focusing on more solid stocks, if you will. Uh, but we'll have to wait and see. Another one is RNW. This is another one, TransUltra Renewables. We bought a long time ago and has performed really well. It's up 11% right now, so it's $22. Really good. Um, I don't know if I'm going to keep buying this one per se, but I'm definitely going to hold it for now because it's just performed really, really super well. Um, this is one a, a stock that when I first started this portfolio, somebody recommended for me to buy. We bought it, and I'm happy that we bought it. So I don't remember who it was who recommended it, but thank you very much because this performed really, really well, and it looks like they're performing really well going into the future. Next up we have is Severia Corp. Um, this is a healthcare-based um, stock, and once again, another good performing stock. We bought this during the crash, um, 8%. You know, 8% gain right now, so they've done really, really well. Um, definitely stock I'm going to be looking forward to invest into in the future and it's also nice and cheap it's easy to buy it's easy to get a lot of shares of with $14 um, next up we have is Shaw Communications this is one we have bought it's actually the first stock I think I added inside this portfolio and we've kind of bought a few shares here and there as time went on uh, we currently own 10 shares right now and they're up about 4.72 percent um, they're a very high yield company and they do pay a monthly dividend um, and I do think they do have a good future because they are doing really, really well. Um, I, I know, for example, I use Shaw for my internet, so you know they're they're, they're a really good uh, uh, telecom. Uh, they have like phone plans, internet plans, all that kind of stuff. So I do think they're a pretty good company to invest into. Um, next up, we have is probably one of my favorite bank stocks to invest into, and this is one I've I've, fo I've been focusing a lot on lately is TD. And if you guys have been watching my videos, you know I talk about TD a lot. But they are by far my favorite bank stock, and we have four shares right now. We're working on growing this. The only problem is because bank stocks are a little bit more expensive, it's hard to get a lot of shares. Um, but it's 6% of my portfolio, total value of $242. So you can see how it does add up over time. And we are at a 3% return, which is $7. Um, $7. So TD is definitely a stock I think is going to 
perform the best going into the future, especially over the next couple of years. Um, and I do, I will be adding a lot more TD inside my portfolio. Next up we have is VDY, which is one of the main ETFs I built this portfolio around. The two ETFs I built this portfolio around are v, VDY, which is Canadian stocks, and then XHD, which is a Canadian hedged US based stock fund. I might change XHD to a different fund going into the future, but for now I'm just gonna keep it the way it is because the returns have been pretty good and I'm not too sure what else to pick. I know a few, guys, few of you guys have recommended me some US ETFs, um, but I'm just gonna keep XHD for now um, because of the way the Canadian dollar is and maybe going into the future, I'm gonna try and do a little bit more research and try to figure out which one I want to do, but for now, um, this is a VDY, so this is basically just a broad Canadian-based high dividend yield ETF. And this is kind of like the base of the portfolio. And we have 20 shares right now, which is once again 16% of the portfolio. I'd like to increase this to be about 30 to 40%, and our total return is negative 1%. Now it looks really low because we have been investing into this ETF um, since the market crash, so we're still kind of recovering a lot. Um, so that should increase going towards the end of the year, especially as we get that yield coming through because it does pay a monthly dividend yield. So most of those returns will come through that. Um, but that's the first um, ETF. Next one we have is VYMI. I will be selling this um, ETF as soon as the price goes up. Uh, we bought this when we first started our portfolio. And as you guys can see, it's sitting negative 12%. We didn't buy any during the market crash. So I don't know what I'm gonna do. I'm just gonna wait and sell this once it goes up because we don't need international stocks inside this portfolio, I don't think. Um, we have so much um, international stocks inside my Wealth Simple account, my other uh, robo advisor based account that I don't think I need this inside this dividend based portfolio. Um, and next up we have is XHD, which once again is my US um, hedged ETF, um, $26 a share. We have 30 shares inside our portfolio, 20% of our portfolio return of 0.27%. So once again, this one pays monthly and this should slowly increase throughout the, um, going towards the end of the year, especially as you buy more shares. Next up we have is XRE. I don't know why I have XRE in here. I bought it way back in the day um, because I do have a REIT based portfolio, which we will go into next. Um, but we are sitting at negative 12% because I haven't bought any since the crash inside this portfolio. And the last one we have is ZWC, which is a Bank of Montreal ETF. We have 10 shares, 4% of the portfolio, and we're seeing about a 6% gain, so not too shabby. So as you guys can see, most of the portfolio is doing pretty well. Uh, most of the stocks are on their way up and that dividend yield, like that dividend that, that we're beginning on a regular basis starting to add up. We're starting to just reinvest those on a regular basis. And I'll show you guys the dividends that I've been getting inside this portfolio really quickly. Here's the dividends for the tax-free savings account. We'll go to dividends. And as you guys can see, they're just kind of like roll in on a random basis here. Uh, but we can see like these dividends on the right side, these are dividend payments, just slowly starting to add up over time. You can see like a dollar here, dollar fifty there, two dollars, two thirty seven. And we've just been taking those dividends, reinvesting them back into the portfolio. And if you guys once again want to see more about this, I cover more this in more detail and I show you guys like my monthly dividend reports and, and my income and stuff like that inside my dividend investing case study. So that's the dividend portfolio. That's kind of how I built it out to where it is now. Let's uh, actually before I jump into the REIT portfolio, I just want to say that if you guys do want to use Wealth Simple Trade, there is an affiliate link in the description of this video. If you guys sign up with it, you'll get ten dollars, and I'll get ten dollars um, when you guys sign up. Um, so thank you to everybody who uses my link. And um, once you guys do deposit that money, you do need to trade a hundred dollars worth of stocks, and then you might need to check their email because I think you need to confirm or activate the, um, I, I guess the. Uh, award, award or whatever you want to call it kind of thing. Uh, so definitely check out for that email. And then once you do that, I think then you'll get the $10. So just want to point that out. But big thank you to everybody who uses my link. There'll be a link in the description of the video if you guys want to check that out and help support the channel. And if you do, I greatly appreciate that. So the next portfolio we're going to talk about is my REIT based portfolio. So hang in there guys, we're almost done. Uh, we're slowly approaching the end. All right, so here's my last rebase portfolio, guys. Um, this is a portfolio sitting at $2,754 Canadian. We This is our newest portfolio that we just started, and this is basically the portfolio that we also do with our dividend investing case study. I just wanted to keep my REITs separate than my um, dividend stocks, but at some point in time, I'll probably toss them inside the same tax-free savings account because our REITs are starting to add up, and I want to make those, um, those dividend payments that we get from our REITs tax-free because you do get pretty high yields from REITs and you do lose a lot of money if you don't have them in some, some kind of tax-free savings account or something. So that is something we're going to be doing over time. And over the course of one day, our REITs are up 0.7%. 
Over the course of one week, we were up 0.21%. Over the course of one month, we were up 2.65%. So REITs are on their way up very slowly. Over the past three months, we were up 3%. And all time, we are up 0.89%. So they're kind of breaking even, but they are on their way up. And keep in mind, REITs do pretty much almost all of them pay on a monthly basis. So as we go towards the end of the year, because we're getting those monthly payments and we're going to be reinvesting those, we should see like our earnings start to go up, our returns start to go up over time. And these are all 100% Canadian REITs, uh, all inside this portfolio, uh, because I am a huge fan of Canadian REITs. Um, and as you guys can see, most Canadian REITs are pretty cheap, and that's why I like them, because you can just buy a bunch of shares. It's easier to spread it that way. And most of these are ETFs, but we do have some individual REITs that we have been buying. So the first one we have is Brookfield Property Partners LP. This is a really solid uh, REIT uh, that I think has some future. In fact, I think all these REITs have some future because I do th believe they are massively underpriced right now, especially with you know everything that's going on with real estate right now. I don't think Canadian real estate is going to slow down anytime soon. I think there's just a lot of uncertainty right now and obviously everything that's happened, right? But I, I, I do think they're gonna grow going into the future and they're gonna grow really big. So that's why I, I'm been investing in them on a regular basis. So the first one we have is Brookfield. Um, we're sitting at a return of 5.21%, which is $9 overall. And this is 7% of our portfolio. So not too shabby, especially since we've only bought this REIT over the past couple months. Our next one, we have the H&R REIT. This is one we've slowly been buying over time. We have 35 shares of this, and mostly because it's only $10, so it's easy to amount a lot of shares. Dollar value of $357, and we are up 5% uh, overall with this one as well. $18.51 uh, $18 overall. Next one we have is RealCan, one of probably the biggest and most popular uh, REITs in Canada. 34 shares, dollar value of $507. And our total re return for real can is actually negative 2.77%. Um, and this is because we, we've been buying this one. Um, we had this one before the market crash. So we've kind of been buying it recently to kind of help bring it up. And I do believe it's going to go up over time. And it's got a very high yield. So that should increase over time. Next one we have is Canadian First Asset REIT. This is one I might sell because, um, or I might just keep investing into. We'll see. I'm not too sure about it. But we have 6% gain for this one. So it's been doing really, really well. Um, but I bought this one way back in the day. Um, I don't know if I'm going to sell it or keep it. We'll kind of have to wait and see how time goes on. But it has been doing pretty well, so I might just keep it. Uh, next one we have is VRE. This is the main ETF inside this REIT portfolio that I've been investing into. We have 24 shares, which is 24% of the portfolio. And we are just breaking even with this REIT. Um, and once again, we had a lot of shares before the market crash. So, you know, this one is a little bit lower than the other ones. Next up we have is XRE. We've been, we bought a lot of XRE before the market crash as well. 31 shares, 17% of the portfolio, and still negative 3%. So obviously that will increase over time. And as we buy more shares, that should increase. Uh, but because we owned a lot before the market crash, obviously it's sitting at a, a pretty big negative. The next one we have is ZRE, um, which is 15 shares. And this is another um, one that we've been holding inside the portfolio and we've been growing. Um, and total return is negative 9% with negative 9.2% overall. And last but not least, let's take a quick peek at the dividends. Now, the nice thing about REITs is they do pay a monthly dividend. So go to filter and we go to dividends. We can see here that most of these REITs, um, we've got to filter it to my REIT account. Most of these REITs do pay a monthly dividend. So we can see that the dividend income, once again, just like the other dividend portfolio, is starting to add up over time. So um, one of the big things I wanted to do lately was to put more focus on the dividend portfolios, which is the dividend portfolio and the REIT portfolio to get that monthly income going because I'm a big fan of dividend stocks and I want to kind of grow that dividend monthly income because I do want to in the future to some point uh, rely off my dividends. So I want to kind of grow that as quick as possible. And I've basically been saving as much money as possible to kind of do that. So if you guys want to join me on this journey, if you guys want to um, follow alongside with me and invest with me and see how I've been able to grow these portfolio portfolios, be sure to subscribe to the channel if you guys want to see that. But that's pretty much all my portfolio, guys. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I know it is a bit of, bit of a long one, but to go through all these stocks and do this deep dive analysis, you kind of have to do it. So um, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I know it was a little bit long, but that's just the way it is. So let me know what you guys think in the comment section. Let me know uh, what you guys think of my portfolio. Uh, feel free to share with you guys how your guy, how your guys' stocks are doing. 
uh, I'd love to hear about it. Uh, but other than that, guys, I'm going to end the video now because it is getting pretty long. Um, so thanks for joining me today, today, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And once again, I do do these updates on a monthly basis. So um, thanks for watching today, guys. Um, take care, and I'll see you guys later.